Right guys, how you going? Mason Corby, Dano Dynamics here. Mr. Helms as well, Mr. Cameraman. Um, today we're gonna go through just a couple different things about rigs. Um, just wanna state that I am not a rigger. I was a pack array, so I did use to pack reserves, but I've got over about 15 years of jumping in the sport. I'm not gonna go through safety features. I'm going to go through opinionated things about what I like and what I don't like about containers. Uh, pros and cons for different reasons like this. Each manufacturer is different. They all have good things, bad things. Um, I'll state what I am sponsored by, what I'm not. I did used to have vectors, they are wonderful rigs. I'm now sponsored by Icon. Um, if you do want any information about safety things, please consult your rigger. Uh, me loft, Koppel's mine. Also in Australia, we have uh, Downward Trend and a couple other guys that are great as well. So. Uh, we'll crack onto it. Uh, there, I have many different rigs here. I have a vector. I have uh, wings to the next one. I have a ve uh, javelin, which is the next one after that. We have a talon. We have an icon and a mirage. What we are also missing here is an infinity. Infinity containers are great rigs as well. Do we miss any other ones, Helms? Yep. Probably have Atom, Atom, Atom <laughs> as well. Yeah, there's probably a bunch of others we missed out there. Uh... Um, heaps of student rigs. So anyway, let, let's let's crack on. So first, I'm gonna uh, I may be a bit disjointed, but I'm gonna go over. Say uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just start, shall we? So first off, I'm gonna talk about um, the side part of the harnesses here. So you'll see some of them have vectors have uh, a bit of a mix. And they all they're all different. Um, You've got this part that comes in from the back and this is so it fits nice and smoothly around the back of your harness and it fits nice and tight. So you'll see some, some containers where if you put them on, if you're in sit fly, sometimes the container sits out really wide here. So that's what this part here does. It sucks the harness nice and tightly into your body. Okay, some, other uh, some manufacturers have come up with a uh, belly button, belly band thing that hold this tighter if the this is wrong, okay? So if you've, say, bought a rig second hand, consider getting a belly band. Belly bands do help pull that a fair bit tighter to your, your waist. Otherwise, if it's fitted to you and you bought it from the manufacturer, they should, uh, it fit, should fit good without a belly band, okay? If it doesn't, you can probably send it back or get a belly band. I'd be pretty ticked if I got it and it didn't fit me. But anyway, so that's what these do, okay? So generally, they come from the center. And this one here has a nice stiff one on the outside, so that holds it nice and tight as well. Okay, so that's for those. You're gonna see, I'm gonna go through those on all of them. You can see here, this one just comes from the center. This is the wings, okay. We'll go here on the Jav. It's got this very similar to the Vector, to the Microns, okay. So, dual. We've got a Talon here, just from the center. I know the, uh, the difference for the Infinities the Infinities actually have a floating one, so it actually moves and floats. They're actually quite good, I really like those. Uh, the Icons, again from the center, these guys have a belly band but, uh, attachment that comes stock standard with it, so if you wanna put the belly band in, I don't need the belly band on this, but it does help. Some people use the belly bands as well, so if they're swooping, they can take the, hand, the chest strap completely off they can lean out of their harness so they don't need the chest strap at all. And that's why a lot of them do use the belly bands for that reason. Um, I like leave my chest strap on. Um, and then we have the Mirage. That's also coming from the center. So you can see there's a big variety of them, but most of the rigs uh, pretty much all come from the center these days, not from the outside because they have learned over time that it's better off coming from inside the rig, a little bit closer to the center of the rig rather than the outside so it fits a lot nicer. Now the next thing we're gonna go over is the, uh, what do you call these again, mate? The uh, riser covers. covers, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Think I know what I'm talking about, won't you? So the riser covers, so many riser covers, they're some of, uh, big variety, okay? These are tuck flaps and these are magnets. Now, personally, I've had tuck flaps and magnets. Um, I've also done speed skydiving competition and Every single, the, the speed skydiving guys all use tuck flaps because believe it or not, the magnets have all come open. Not on this ring in particular, it was actually my vector, but I've had it also happen on these. All the magnet ones, whenever I've gone really fast, they actually pop open. And the riggers and the manufacturers say, 
stick another magnet in. And guess what? I've stuck another magnet in and it still bloody happens. Yeah? The magnets are not strong enough if you're doing speed skydiving. If you're doing them, get tuck flaps, okay? Otherwise, you will have to tape your harness um, and your, your risers, so therefore it doesn't flap open. I've actually had my toggle come out because my riser popped open, I was going that quick, my toggle wrapped around my ankle doing 450k an hour and it wasn't fun when I went to pitch because I thought my suit had actually blown open, I know, ego thinking I blew my, I was going that fast my suit come open, but I wasn't. My toggle came out and I wrapped around my leg. Um, it was luckily one of the best openings I'd ever had, surprisingly, um, jumping a layer, but is what it is. So if you're going to go quick, tuck flaps are really good. We do need to fix that, guys, if any of you manufacturers are listening, because the magnets, we are having issues. Um, but they still are great. They still do work. But if we're going fast, tuck flaps are great. So you'll see the Mirage tuck flaps on this one. Bit of a different design. We've got a lip here, and then this comes under here, so it goes over the riser. So it seems like it's a two-stitched kind of thing. It's two-staged. Right, so it's a Mirage. These ones. Magnets here, cool, the magnets are on the inside. Put the magnets in. They're both great, vectors have these. All, all rigs these days, I'm pretty sure, have tuck, tuck flaps. Tuck. So tuck, this is a little bit different than the Mirage, you can see, so it's kind of one here, it's a, uh, as one piece, and it's just tucking around. Some of these do wear, I find, you can see it's wearing a little bit there, so that's something to watch as well if you're gonna get another rig and, and you're looking at buying and purchasing rigs. The Jav tuck, tuck flaps I have found personally have been the best. Um, I really, really, really like the Jav ones. They're really good. Uh, a lot of the speed guys do wear them as well. So check them out. It's a really nice tidy rig there. Uh, we've got the wings one, very similar to the Jav. It's a little bit shorter. You can see these guys have a little bit longer. That's shorter, but they still work. And then we go to the magnets again on the vectors. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit different. They've kind of had that little thing that goes in compared to the icon. They think that that does stop it from coming open, but as I said previously, um, I have had that come open as well. So it's a little bit difficult to jam in, but vectors are quite good. Now if I take these to the two magnet ones, what we're gonna see here, we have these little risers. So as I open this, there's another stage in here. This, this goes over the risers compared to this one doesn't. Okay, so this, they've made this bit a little bit longer compared to this part, that covers the risers there as this comes over. See the magnets here, they can flip, if they flip around on the inside, they can bunch up. This just means that the magnets, they're not all sitting properly within this riser cover. So you might need to flip the magnets around so they actually sit correctly. And this also can be a reason why the risers come open if your magnets aren't actually fitted in the riser correctly. So really have a think about that, uh, have a check that out. Okay, so you can see here, boom, that comes over. This goes in and there's the two differences between how they are sitting there, the different shapes. Both work, um, but as I said, for speed and for going fast, I am sponsored by these guys, but I, I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna be honest and I will tell you guys what my opinion is and why my opinion has developed that way. So. I'll put that a little closer again. Ah, okay, so that's, we've gone over riser covers and we've gone over the articulation here in, uh, sorry, not the articulation and the um, side laterals. Now we're also gonna find some articulation. The articulation is this part in the rings, okay? So you'll see some containers like the vectors and the jabs. I think you have the option in all containers to do this, it's up to you. Um, I find when we have articulation from what I've found, most rigs with articulation compared to the stitching coming from here, most of these, you can correct me if I'm wrong as well, Holmes, but most of these ones I find have a common occurrence of the riser actually slipping off people's shoulders. The reason that can happen a lot is due to the harness and the chest strap being tightened so much to a point that it actually causes this here to now start slipping off. So this is where when you're wearing the container, it's almost better to have this not super, super tight, but just comfortable over you. So it doesn't actually pull this out wider. You can see how now it starts pulling that wider. So having it so it's nice and kind of just comfortably fitted, okay, is actually, is actually safer and better. Um, I've never seen anyone slip out of their harness due to this. 
Yeah, never. So it's just gonna be uncomfortable. It's just gonna be playing on the back of your head and distracting you. So I personally prefer to have this type of harness rather than this type of harness, but I'm sure other people out there will say differently and it's all personal preference, okay? That's why I do wanna preach on these videos that I'm not saying anything's right or wrong, each thing's personal preference, okay? So we, as we flip it over, we can see, boom, Wings has this, boom, Icon, I've got this, but I know all manufacturers, not I don't know, but I'm pretty sure all manufacturers have the option to get articulation for the chest strap area or you can see the rings down here, different placement of the rings, that's the same kind of thing as well compared to this. I prefer this style compared to this style or compared to, say, here we go. So you can see there's a bit of a mix, okay? Mix, that's the same as that, same as that. So it's each to your own, different preferences, but my preference is something like that. That one in and just a nice one piece going over. All right, so that's the, the general harness. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is, uh, oh God, what's staring me in the face right here? Now, if uh, free flying, free flying, free flying, anything in general, even not free flying, flat frying, flat, flat frying um, I would suggest everyone starts moving to puds. The big reason why a good friend of mine showed me, Mr. Bogues. Anyone seen that before? That can be pretty bloody gnarly, okay? We're all wearing GoPros these days. All right, that fits in very well. That's quite scary. You do a count and you go, ready, set, boom. You've just popped your mate's reserve. You haven't cut him away, you've popped his reserve on the door. So really thinking about if you're getting into jumping and you're gonna be doing it for a long time, puds. Yeah, puds are, sorry whoever's cameras that is, puds are a, a, a very good reason to get them because of that. Now if we're gonna talk about puds, there's many different types of puds. Oh yeah, look at that too. So I didn't see about that. That's, uh, we really don't want a kind of, I'll actually bring this over. So this, this personally, that's a pretty, pretty shocking system to have, all right? I'm pretty sure Talon would have fixed this by now as well. It's different options, um, but you don't want that. That's a lot easier to slip off. If we look at what the reserve and the cutaway should be like, it should be jammed in like this. This should be floating. So we do want it so it doesn't have Velcro on both sides. And that way we can peel off, but this is also covering it, okay? So that's in here like this, all right? Nice and in safe, but that there is a really shocking, I, I would not go for something like that personally, okay? You can see on the other side, it's covered as well, but the Velcro is only on one side, okay? Something else we want to really notice is the gripping and the, and the type of the pud. This is really squishy. It's got nothing inside, okay? I can bend that. It's going to be a bit harder to grip. Same with this. Look how thin this is. All right, so if I move this side, I move this, and you can see that shape there. Okay, and you can see this kind of shape here. Now this has a flat back and when I get my hand on it, I can actually feel like that's gripping. I've had personally before, which I've talked about on another video before when I chopped, my hand wearing gloves, I wasn't able to grip it properly because I had nothing there to grip. It was a lot harder and the gloves slipped on the inside. Whereas now because I got a bit of a lip, it's gonna grip a lot easier. That's why also when I do my drills, I don't grab my handle like this. I grab my handle like this, okay? Now I've got like a full, that's a lot easier to get the leverage from, okay? You can see even on this container, same thing as this one, okay? It's floating on the back, boom. It's a lot safer. Really check your Velcro, okay? When you're checking your rig, rips, tears, frays. When you're checking your metal, cracks, burrs, and corrosions. Thank you, Army, for teaching me that. Very good saying, they're good at their uh, little catchphrases. Rips, tears, frays, cracks, burrs, and corrosions when you're checking it. So, reason I have these, handles, nice, grippy. Okay, you can grip that compared to this one. You can grip it, but it's squishy. This has something inside that's hard. I cannot bend that at all. It's got a bit of tubing. This one, hmm. Yeah, so these are the things you want to check out. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, 
it's still TSR, it's still TSR, I'm pretty sure, still safe, you can use it, it's gonna work, but they're the little things you wanna try and keep in mind, okay? Um, this one here, good. See, nice and hard as well, it's got something hard in it. Okay, so it doesn't have as big of a lip, but it still works belly quite well. On uh, belly band, no, no belly band on that one. Oh yes, it does have a belly band on this one. Okay, so let's check that out. This is the belly band I was talking about before. After that, we're gonna finish off and we'll just talk real quickly about the pilot suits and the deployment system uh, and the RSL I'll go through real quick too. So, belly band, this is exactly what I was talking about. I'll put this one on. Okay, you can see here, belly band, it's been tied off, so it's a different method rather than the clip that's been put on uh, my rig, the Icon, and they can tie it off onto here, onto this point on the at attachment. Okay, just on that little ring that comes down. Comes on here, just like this. Oop. Thread that through. Ugh. Not showing a good demo right now. There we go. And that there is what's gonna pull if that's it out wide. That pulls, go that side shot. That pulls that nice and in tight. Cool, that's why people use the belly band. This rig's for a person a bit smaller than me, so it's a bit harder for me to show, but belly bands. Okay, so a couple of these don't have RSLs. It's all got one on the harness, on the, on the container, so you can check it out. Here's, a, here's one here. Okay, I'm trying to find one that's wrong. These are all correct RSLs at the moment. So what I will find, we find this sometimes. So the RSL, notice where, mm, I would like to find a typical one. This, okay. So you can see here how the ring comes down, just like that there. And the ring comes from the back and this little tab is towards the body. The reason this is, is for multiple reasons. One, you can go, if you wouldn't, it'd be pretty tricky doing this, but very easy to undo with the teeth if your hands are tied up. Okay, also it's easier for you to pull here. You don't have to reach around. This one comes in. And also, if this is going on from this direction, this is a lot easier for this to happen and get tangled in, okay? If you're going to chop and this three ring comes off, it's gonna jam that in there. So it can still happen the other way. It's just a lot less likely to happen, okay? It's got a lot further to go. It can still happen, it can still go in, but there's just less chance for it to go in, all right? So really thinking about putting that there, look from it, it comes in from the back. Oh, chop my finger up comes in from the back. Don't put it in from the front. I see a lot and a lot of time people get their containers back from riggers and it comes back the other way. So keep an eye on that. Last one is puds. Puds, puds, puds. Hackies. Okay, floating handle. That's a lot easier to slip out. It does work, but for free flying, I would prefer something similar to this where it tucks nice and in. Okay, it's a lot flatter. Something similar to this. This is good too. You can see where this here slips under this. Goes nice and under really well, okay? Um, this one here, it doesn't have either, okay? But that's in, it's a little bit similar to this hacky over here, but it pulls in this direction. This one here, the vector again, goes in under that, okay? So these are all pilot shoots. They all just throw aways. You wanna probably peel and then throw. Okay, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna just pull this direction because it's gonna jam like that. It's not gonna be as good. Cool. All right, so last but not least is this mechanism here. Okay, we'll use these. So you can see some come from the bottom like that. Comes from the bottom, bottom, bottom. Javs going over from the top rises spiral coming under and these bottom. So you can see the quite typical one is from coming from the bottom over. Now let's go back to these ones. Okay. You see here, it's a throwaway. So you can see here, the pilot chute, that'll come out, inflate, boom, and pull that pin. All right. Now the way, oh, actually, I'll actually do that. Boom, pull, deploys, 
inflates. Da -da -da -da. <gasps> Pop. You're packing that. I'll pack that. <laughs> All right. This next one, the way I do this is uh, I have it so it's the pin is tucked under. Okay. The reason is because I do a lot of jumps with a lot of people, so no one can bump me, and the pin is a lot more likely to stay in the container if I get a bump. Now it is a pull-out system, so it's different than a throwaway like this one. Okay. So you have to it's a straight pin as well you have to pull this it comes out like a floating handle okay and you pull the pin the pin's pulled you pull the pilot chute out it's connected to this as that inflates then it acts like a very normal pilot chute and pulls that out okay you'll see and notice the difference here is the two pins one's a curved pin one's a straight pin the reason that is is this one rotates when it comes out the pilot chute comes out, it rotates, and then it pulls out this way, just like this, it slides. Because I'm pulling this pin out, it's straight, I physically have to pull it, and then it comes out. Now, the reason I use a straight pin is because it's underneath, one, it's a pull-out system, and that's just what they use, but uh, because it's pulling direct line of pull, Whereas if I use the curve pin on this system here, you have a flap that goes over the top of this. So when you want, when you uh, pull on the pilot, she comes out, it gets jammed, and it's not able to rotate to then come out. So it's a lot more likely to jam and have an actual lock, and not be able to come out. And sometimes you have a pilot shoot in tow. Okay, so that's why I use this system. So it goes under. I'm more safe from people bumping my uh, my uh, pin out. And therefore, I decide when I'm pulling the pin out. If you are going to use this system, talk to your rigger, talk to your CI, make sure it's safe, run through, send me a message, ask some questions. I'll happily help and give any answers that anyone needs. Um, all container manufacturers, from what I'm aware, do offer a uh, pull-out system. I may be wrong. Uh, they were around before pilot shoots. It's actually older than a throwaway system. Um, and I do prefer this. A lot of us experienced guys are going back to this method. Um, so yeah, so anyway, like, share, subscribe. Hope you enjoy the content. Uh, leave any questions, queries, comments, or remarks in the uh, comment box. And I hope you enjoyed the content, guys. Have a good one.